Good morning once again as we come together to look at Proverbs, looking for wisdom in this age. And uh, this uh, verse that we're going to look at today is, is so appropriate for right now in, in our lives with all the stuff going on around us. Uh, uh, not only the, the stuff related to the, the demonstrations, but also the, the COVID and, and honestly just the way our culture is in general today. And so Proverbs chapter 10 is where we're going to be starting. We're going to be reading verse 12. Proverbs 10 verse 12 says, Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all sin wrongs. So what we're talking about this morning is love and hate. And the, 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 guy, who's, uh, right, the guy who writes Proverbs, Solomon, he says, first of all, hatred stirs up conflict. Well, Let's understand, first of all, hatred is not a disagreement, okay? We can disagree on issues and not hate one another. Um, sometimes in, in the political discussion, you know, or sometimes on the Facebook discussions, you see people, you know, say, haters going to hate, and so if you don't agree with my position, obviously you must hate me, or, or you don't, you know, you, you hate this group of people, or you hate whatever, Okay. Hate is not necessarily a disagreement on issues. Now, if you hate, you will probably disagree on issues. But hate is not simply that we don't agree on things. Hatred is personal. Hatred is not that you and I see an issue and we disagree on the issue. Hatred is my desire for something bad to happen to you. And I, I don't want you to succeed in life. I don't want good things to happen to you. Or I want you to have some kind of punishment because you aren't worthy of love or, or whatever, which is a complete misunderstanding of what love is all about, isn't it? So hatred is, is personal. Hatred is about my disdain for somebody else, that I, I don't like them, uh, something about them, right? Uh, hatred stems from a couple of things. Uh, one, it come, just comes from our fallenness, right? We, we are disconnected from the God of love who created us. We are disconnected from that sense of, of the love that he has for us. Hatred also comes from hurt. You know, if you've hurt me, that could lead to bitterness in my heart. And if I don't deal with that bitterness in my heart, it could then lead me to, to be hateful towards you. That I, I don't like you because you hurt me. Um, and I no longer see you. As, as good and beautiful and unique as in God's creation, I just see you as the one who brought hurt into my life. Uh, and tied to that, hatred is, is, is stems from unforgiveness. When I have been wronged and you haven't made it right, and, and I refuse to, to allow God to, to help me through that unfor the, the forgiveness process, as I hold that bitterness in my heart, then hatred... Hatred comes from that. Hatred is, at its root, a disrespecting of another person made in the image of God. Because remember, we're all image bearers. No matter how fallen somebody is, he or she is still created by the Almighty God, and there is still within that person the image of God to some degree. Now, it may be very, very uh, distorted. It may be very, very hard to see. But scripture is clear that we are all bearers of the image of God. And so therefore, we should love one another. And that's why God calls us to love each other. Both within the church and those outside the church, we're called to love them because they are a creation of God, bearing the image of God, uniquely bearing the image of God. And uh, prejudice is, is just a focused form of hatred. It's a, it's a hatred because you are a particular race or you are a particular gender or you are a particular whatever, okay? And so clearly, hatred is wrong in Scripture. Prejudice is wrong, that, that we are to not see people as groups of people, but we are to view the individual and we are to love individuals because God has called us to reach this world. And how are we going to reach this world if we have negative feelings toward people, right? So he calls us to love one another instead. He says, hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over sin. See, love desires what's best for the other, right? 
Love desires that, that good things will come into your life. Love desires that, that, that you, your, your life is full and enriched, right? But love is more than just that desire. Love is not just that warm feeling that we feel inside that, that, that's a part of loving feelings. I mean, those are great. We love those, right? But love is the willingness to act on behalf of the other person. Love just says, not only do I feel a, a, an affection for you, but I'm going to do what I can to make sure that your life is enriched, that your life is better. Love is doing things. In, uh, in the New Testament, we're told that, you know, hey, if someone comes to you and has a need and you say, oh, I love you, brother, I'll pray for you, God is good to you, but you don't do anything, what, what good is that? If I have the ability to help another and I choose not to do that, then I just need to examine my life. Why is that? You know, what, what is it about? Well, why, why didn't I do that? Well, why, why am I not taking care of it? Because love moves into action. God loved the world in such a way he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf, right? Love recognizes God's image in the other. And this is why the only way we will ever overcome things like racism is if we, especially the church, step up and love one another. Love the, the, the person that, that's different than we are. Love the person that thinks different than we are. Even when, you know, sometimes when we can be radically different ends of the spectrum uh, in terms of political or philosophical and yet, we have to learn, how can I love that person? How can I reach out to that person? How can I show them that God loves them so much, and because God loves them, then I'm going to love them as well? But that means we have to be willing to act. Love also involves forgiveness and honesty. He says, love covers over a multitude of sins. And that doesn't mean that if you know, someone is doing wrong that we, we just say, okay, well, that's all right. You know, I'm just going to, we're going to cover that over. No, part of love is telling the truth, right? Part of love is saying what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is destructive. I don't want you, I want what's best in your life, so I want to help you. Uh, but love occurs in relationship. You know, if I see someone doing wrong and I just walk up to them on the street and say, hey, you shouldn't do that, they, they probably won't listen to me. But if I have a relationship with them, then they may listen to me. But sometimes we just have to, to, to be honest with people and say, hey, this is, this is what I see. But it should always be done in, in, bathed in the sense of love. I want to do this because I care about this person. And I want their life to be better. And so when things are done to me, that means I have to forgive. The only way I can love someone who has hurt me is I have to forgive. I know that Jesus has forgiven me for the things that I have done. And now I must turn around and forgive them as well. So we need to let, allow the love of God to so fill our lives that it flows out from us to the people around us. See, hatred stirs up sin. Hatred, hatred stirs up uh, the, the, these conflict and, and struggle and, and all of this stuff. And it does no good. Love, on the other hand, covers over sin. Love says, here, come, you know, yeah, you messed up, but let me come, let me walk with you to, to find a better place for you. Hey, I uh, hope you're having a great day today. If everything is going well, um, Angie and I are with our grandbaby right now and uh, looking forward to this weekend. We get to see each other once again for those that are comfortable coming and being a part of the live service. God bless you. And have a great day. Let's, let's say a quick prayer and go on our way. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us love so that we can love others. And matter of fact, it's through your love that we learn how to love one another. So, Lord God, I pray, fill us with your love. And then, Lord, help us to love those around us. Lord, help us to put aside all, all forms of hate and prejudice and, and all of those things that keep us from reaching the people that you have called us to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord God. You are an awesome God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus.